In lesson 11, I want to do another beam analysis, uh, which we have done before, but today I'm going to show how to use uh, other beam elements, such as beam um, 188 as the element for analysis, compared to the old version beam 3. If you remember in either of, in one of the lessons before, should be 3, let me remove it, okay. In the lessons before, I used uh, or I did beam analysis, and I used beam three, which uh, takes a uh, real constant with cross-sectional area, which you can give, and then IZZ or area moment of inertia, and then uh, height. So basically, what you get from this real constant is a uh, square or rectangle uh, cross-section area for your beam which doesn't give you enough flexibility of, uh, let's say, having a square, I mean, circle um, shaped for your beam, if you want to define a beam element. Beam 188 is another element to analyze or to do beam analysis. This one doesn't take real constant. So if you go to real constant after selecting beam 88, it's going to give you an error. But then there is another option in ANSYS called Section under the preprocessor uh, in which you can define your beam in terms of uh, circular, um, square or real uh, or rectangle or any other forms that are common in uh, the shapes. So today I'm going to do a beam analysis again. This is going to be my um, beam fixed at one end and a constant or uniform pressure applied to a half uh, section of this beam and the length is going to be 200 but divided to two sections of 100 let's say millimeters so this is going to be that the cross-section area is going to be a circle with uh, the radius of uh, let's say 20 millimeters. The material is going to be steel with the same uh, uh, properties of before 200 gigapascals for elasticity and Poisson's ratio of 0 0.303 and then we're gonna see how to do uh, how to run this uh, analysis using uh, beam 188 element compared to the regular or uh, old beam 3. Okay, with that let's go to ANSYS and do the analysis. Okay, uh, we're in ANSYS and um, the first thing I want to do is to come and select the structural from preferences and then go to preprocessor, select uh, element type, add edit, add beam and I want to pick beam 188. I can also pick, pick uh, beam 189, but uh, the difference is that for beam 188, each element is going to have two nodes, but in beam 189, each element is going to have three nodes. So I'm going to pick uh, beam 188 here, and I'm going to stick with the default options for this uh, element. Go forward. And just to show you that this beam doesn't get any real constants, let's try and it will say that the beam 188 does not type, uh, element type does not require real constant. So I go from here, and the next step is to define the material properties. I come to structural, linear, elastic, isotropic, and let's give the values as before. And let's go to sections, beams, and common sections. And here you get ID, which you will use if you have more than one beams or one uh, cross-section for your beams. You can define as many as you want and give them ID numbers, which you can use later while uh, meshing your model. And then you give a name for it, which I want to give beam 01 uh, subtype. So you can pick uh, some of the common forms for beams that are uh, commonly used. So I'm going to pick circular. And then I'm going to give a radius of 20. This N and T uh, actually 
define how you mesh your uh, uh, your uh, cross section area and defines how many uh, or defines the number of elements or number of uh, lines for, for to divide for elements in angular direction so from 0 to 360 I can divide it, divide it into let's say 12 elements and T is a uh, number of divisions in, radi in in the radial direction so if I pick uh, let's say 20 and click mesh view you will see that 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 times 2 makes 12 elements in the angular direction 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13 up, up to 20 uh, elements in the radial direction are be the divisions of uh, this cross-section area so I click OK for this one and go to modeling the first thing is I'm going to uh, create uh, three key points in active CS one at point zero zero apply the other one is at X of 100 and apply and the last one is at X of 200 and OK so I have three key points I can make lines straight lines pick the key points and my lines are made now it's time to do the meshing the first thing I want to do is to come to control size, manual size, lines, and let's say all lines because I have only two lines, and uh, divide them by let's say uh, 10 each or let's make it more 50 each with the constant space ratio. So I'm not going to give anything in here. I click OK. So each of these lines are divided into 50 sections. Now I come to mesh lines and pick both the lines and click OK my lines are meshed now it's time to apply the loads the first thing I want to do is to come to analysis type new analysis and make sure that it's, this is a static analysis then go to define loads apply structural displacement on key points pick this key point here and make it all DOF at zero click OK so my beam is fixed at this end now I want to apply uh, a pressure on the second half of the beam if you remember from the previous uh, analysis I said that if you want to apply pressure you need to pick beams but I have 50 elements and here in the second half of the beam and picking them one by one is not going to be an easy uh, task so what I do is to I come to select entities lines by num and pick apply or OK pick this line click OK and then come to select again entities elements attached to lines click OK so all of these elements are picked for me now if I come to on beams and click uh, pick all then all my beams are all my elements in here are selected so I'm gonna say thousand uh, for the pressure and because I want to have a constant pressure I'm gonna leave this one alone and click OK now let's see a 3d uh, portion and let's select all or everything and then again so if you see a constant or a uniform pressure is applied to this beam in Z direction now my model is ready I come to solution solve current LS click OK solution is done now let's go to general post process plot results deformed shape and this is how my um, model or my uh, beam is deformed based on the load that I applied to it control plot nodal solution let's pick DOF in Z and this is it and the Z direction I have this uh, uh, deformation I can also go for let's say von Mrs. stress and this 
be as constant or vector plots translation this is how my beam moves in, in the vector per, per each node or for each node that uh, uh, defines the direction of uh, translation for um, this beam let's go to list results and first see the reaction solution we have only one point in this beam that has reaction so I come to all items click OK for that point I have loads like this in Z and then moments around X Y and Z but there is no loads in X and Y directions because the pressure was applied in Z direction I can also see nodal loads again all items for all the nodes so for all the nodes I can see the loads so only nodes 1 2 and some of the other nodes have uh, moments in X direction the rest of them only have moments in Z direction or or uh, about Z axis and there is an FZ of minus thousand in node 1 which is here and the rest uh, are okay you can see them and you can li uh, save this uh, list in, an, in a text file and load it in Excel I can also come to nodal solution and pick anything that I require let's say Z component of displacement this one is also uh, the displacement of my beam in Z direction for each node in here so basically or let me show you how this beam is shown in here the 3D representation and before that I have to go from vector to let's say plot results control plots here now you see this is the 3D representation of uh, my beam based on the uh, uh, cross-section area I defined for it in the section uh, section step of uh, preprocessor here so when I came here and defined my uh, um, beam cross-section and the number of uh, elements per cr in the cross-section this is what uh, the analysis is showing to me so basically the purpose of this lesson was to show you how you can use other beam elements uh, except for beam 3 to run your analysis define the cross-section area and uh, go from there and do a beam analysis